I've lived here for 10 years. I've been painting only for a year since not painting for 10 years. Uh, I was, uh, was working in construction for the previous 10 years. And then that kind of dried up in this area and I had this studio which was empty at the time and I realized I had to face that demon again and paint again. It was in Pittsburgh where I went to, my father took us to um, the Carnegie Mellon museum and I was probably seven years old and clearly remember um, seeing uh, they had a small American painting collection and I was fairly mesmerized as a child by it. I thought it was I thought I thought it was all a magic trick actually and I think that kind of stuck with me and I think that's why somewhere that seed was planted in me and I knew that I, I needed to possibly be a painter. Uh, and then when I was a teenager in New York City, there was, it was just a pretty wild place to live. And you could kind of be creative and flourish, I guess, in that way. And then uh, in college, I uh, studied art. And then I uh, got out of college and I didn't paint at all because <laughs> I hit the wall of having to make a living. And that's how I fell into construction. So I did that for about seven years. And then I realized I needed to paint again. I, I needed to find out if I was an artist or not an artist. Because I didn't want to be a person who was constantly saying, oh, I, I should be an artist or I should be a writer. Um, and so I just took that leap of faith and painted for about seven to 10 years. And then that kind of fell apart. And it took another 10 years to get back to the studio. But it feels good to be back to the studio. I, I had another burst of creativity, which I didn't think was, that's not always in one. You know, you might have burnt out, so. And I started with these circles in the back to get a pattern going. And then all these other surface images just kind of came to me. Usually when I'm making the, the initial ground, the, the loose, the, uh, the thin down paint, that gets applied pretty loosely and haphazardly sometimes. So yeah, these more formal things, if, if I only did that, then there would be no splatter on these walls. <laughs> Some paintings will provoke another painting to come. And this is the last of the previous series, and those blank canvases are the next series. So. This painting is called The Dating Game. drawings of those stones and three paintings actually so it became a series and then I had the wild idea if they needed to be turned into a three-dimensional object and Malcolm Harlow lives in this county he's a stone carver who worked in the cathedral and I asked him if he would um, carve these things for me turn them into these objects and you know he was game for that and um, 
really they're meant to, they're, you know, they could be hidden in the bushes, and if somebody finds them a hundred years from now, they'll think that they're in some ancient religion or something. So it's really you know, very kid-like, actually. But they're also meant to be about, you know, the, uh, the mystery of language and the mystery of antiquities and people discovering things and what do they mean and people always saying, what does it mean? And, you know, you've got to sometimes figure that out on your own. So if those go in the show or if I show those to people, they're always asking, what do they mean? Do they mean something? And no, they don't mean anything. It's a made up language. So, um, so it's, yeah, it's meant to be a little bit of a, on the light side. There's something to be said about traditional landscapes, but, and they're decorative. All painting is in, in essence a wall decoration, but there's also a, like a deeper landscape to look at. So I painted a painting called BP, which I sold this summer to a friend of mine, and uh, that was about last summer's oil spill. And I did a painting that was um, uh, kind of a, uh, a reflection on a woman's poem that was called 29 Men. That was about the mining disaster in West Virginia. And then this painting on Afghanistan came out um, out of May, and that is a reaction to our, our, our wasted 10 years in Afghanistan. And um, I have a painting on, titled Libya and a few others, but generally I don't do paintings that are directly a political statement. Um, but that does happen to be. <laughs> so we, we, need, we have priorities that we need to reset. So nature is uh, probably the biggest influence. I mean, there's. I don't want to paint cityscapes. I'm not. Um, I'm not interested in a lot of uh, non-nature related things. So it really, it, it, it kind of evolves out of the landscape. And that's, uh, and that informs me about color. I mean, all, all the color we want is out there, so it's it's almost, and that's why a lot of my paintings are about color. Um, I don't want to paint in shades of gray, let's say. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's significant. The woods and nature, the water, rivers, wind, whatever. I mean, that all informs me for sure. What I'm working on right now, it's just a series of just panels of colors, what I call them. They're, they're, they're truly just decorations. But they're, the reason I'm painting them is um, in this, where I'm having this show, the, it's all, all the paintings can be on the second floor. But when people walk in, they're gonna, this panel of color is going to be there just to like hopefully get their eyeballs excited. Artists maybe need to look a little deeper, and that's what it's really all about just looking a little deeper. Um, I love traditional landscapes and illustrations, but um, as a painter, for me, the excitement lies in a, a deeper level of observation, I guess.